Could the congregation please rise? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In holy baptism, Richard was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all his sin. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Please be seated. On behalf of Richard's family, thank you for being here today. Just in way of announcements, uh, simply to say that after the service, you are invited to come and greet the family on your way out into our parish hall, and you will be able to please join the family for a luncheon after the service today. I'd like to begin by asking Richard's granddaughter, Jackie, to come forward and bring the eulogy on behalf of the family. Jackie. Thank you all for coming. <sighs> Richard Pubans, what can I say? He my grandpa, my extraordinary grandpa. <sighs> he is a son, a father, a brother, an uncle, a cousin, and a great friend. As most of you know, my grandpa came from Germany when he was 13. He was he came with his beautiful mother and his brother all the way to Canada. Can you imagine a little immigrant boy, that's what he would always say, from Germany that arrives with not much of an idea what the world had in store, then to create such a magnificent world for himself, his family, and loved ones. It's quite remarkable the determination and drive he had. Shortly after arriving to Canada, his small family of three would grow into a big family of eight. This came along with cousins and uncles and aunties. This family was big and full and lots of personality. There is always celebrations with big long table dinners, lots of laughing and very great memories. My grandpa would always tell me how he was supposed to be a pastor and to me that made sense because my grandpa was a man of faith and served that faith till his last breath. We would go to church at the extended care facility and he knew exactly what to do during communion, regardless of the state of his mind. It was second nature. It was quite remarkable to watch. I was in awe. Nothing could stop this man's faith. Nothing at all. Growing up, he met the love of his life, my grandma Doreen. As a teenager, they fell in love, got married, and had two children, Walter and Albert. 
With all the hard work at economy heating and building houses, he was able to retire early in his 60s. Him and Doreen would travel the world and go on many adventures. Tragically, my grandma Doreen had passed away at a very young age of 60. He was devastated. He would never be the same. He was alone and it was hard for him. Luckily, he had found companionship with Helen Demchuk and he was able to heal his heart. Helen was, a wonderful and great, was wonderful and great for him. She was a great addition and his family adopted my grandpa with so much love. I was happy my children got to have a baba. He had lived with Helen, it was great. He wasn't alone anymore. The two of them would travel and enjoy time with family and friends, but st still loved their beloved spouses endlessly. They would go to the Evergreen Memorial site together where both of their spouses are and take time and visit them separately. It was like it was meant to be. They both shared stories with their spouses all the time. They both made it obvious that there was no s replacements but understanding, love, and happiness for their time together now. When anyone asked my grandpa, how are you? He would joke, not bad for an old guy, or good, can't complain. He always tried to stay positive. No matter what life threw at him, he kept his faith close and let God take the wheel. I believe that that helped create his life of success. He was a man that was a great achiever a hard worker and a great provider. He attended state, he worked for the city of Edmonton, and he became a superintendent at Economy Heating. He was proud of his work ethic and experiences and all the stories he could share from that time. He really liked to share stories, lots of stories. He told stories with such conviction and energy to the very end, even laughing the whole way through. I always remember his deep, belly chuckle, his eyes full of tears from laughing so hard. No matter how many times he would share the same story, the passion and delight was always present. He loved playing tennis. You better believe that. He would challenge anyone and everyone to a match, and he has the stories to prove it. He would tell me such stories with glory and say with a big grin, not bad for an old guy. He played tennis until he was 82 years old. Definitely not bad for an old guy. My grandpa taught me simple things like punctuality. If you're not 15 minutes early, you're 15 minutes late. I was always late in his books. <laughs> Respect, treat others how you want to be treated. Integrity, what do you stand for? You only have your word. Without that, you have nothing. He, sp he stood for things. He was honorable, reliable, committed, generous, in helping people build things, fix things, giving his time and resources to people, and things that truly mattered to him. He had very old school values, which I'm thankful for, because as I live my life with my family, I realize they have sure rubbed off on me. And my children will learn all he has taught me, and that's a true blessing, that is legacy. He created a life that he was proud of, he had fun, he had tons of friends. It was so hard to even make plans with him. He would have to check his calendar and pencil me in and get back to me. <laughs> he drove cool cars and he looked like a movie star. He lived well, he ate well, he loved buffets, and he would even go for thirds with a side of dessert and then dessert again. <laughs> he seen the world, he had great connections, he was a provider. I find it hard to sum up a 91 year old I find it hard to sum up 91 years of a great life in just a few minutes. He is magnificent with all the wisdom, power, and glory. He is legacy. And he will live on in our hearts and our memories. I love you. I thank you, Grandpa, for all that you created and all that you provided and all that you are. Forever in our hearts, love and light, Godspeed. And thank you all for coming. Thank you, Jackie. We've included two beloved German hymns in our service today, and we printed the words both in German and English. The first hymn is, Jesu geh voran, Jesus still lead on. 
The words are printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. Please stand. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Richard. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I invite you to turn in your bulletin to our psalm for today, Psalm 91, and I ask you to read the psalm with me in unison. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. The reading today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, 
and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We will sing our next hymn, Amazing Grace, also printed in your bulletin. Rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel for today is from John chapter 10. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the sheep and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. To you, Richard's family and friends, I say today, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I've chosen to reflect with you this morning on the portions of Psalm 97, Psalm 91, excuse me, as we gather here at St. John's, which as we heard from Jackie, has been Richard's spiritual home for so many, many years. We're gathered to remember and give thanks for Richard's long and full life. Psalm 91 is the perfect word from God's word to read today because I believe this psalm speaks loudly about God's faithfulness. And looking back today on Richard's whole life, as again, Jackie, you did so well for all of us, no doubt we can agree God has been faithful to Richard. In this psalm, God has two names. God is called the refuge and God is called the fortress. 
a strong hold who will not waver or crumble amid the struggles of our lives. These themes come to the forefront of any Christian funeral, as they do today. However, there is one word in this psalm that rings loud and clear today as we gather as family and friends to commend our brother Richard into the hands of his Savior. And that word is satisfied. Let me read the end of the psalm one more time. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call me, I will answer them. I will be with them in time of trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. With long life, I will satisfy them. Satisfied. To be satisfied means to be filled. And what fills us today as we gather? First, we are filled with gratitude. There are no questions left to be asked. There are no lingering whys to nag us. Richard Pubance has been blessed with the gift offered in Psalm 91. And even though there were struggles these last few years of his life with memory and confusion and communication, still we are here today, as I have already said, to give thanks for a whole and a long life well lived. As our psalm reminds us, Richard was indeed given a long life, a rich life. A life, yes, of course, and of course, family, you are sad today. Grief is part of death's sting, whether a person is nine or 91. There is sorrow, of course, but as I said already, there is not any sense of regret in this room or unfairness attached to Richard's death. None of you feel cheated, cheated or robbed today. So I pray in the middle of your grief that you will also recognize that there are many reasons for gratitude and thanksgiving for Richard's life and the gifts he so generously shared. We are satisfied. We are satisfied. We're not too many weeks away from Thanksgiving, and Thanksgiving to God is a theme for this day. But something else satisfies us today. We are filled with gratitude, but we are also filled with confidence. Whenever Christians gather to say farewell at a funeral, we express confidence, not in our own worthiness or achievements, but we express confidence in the faithfulness of God. Our, li our large baptismal candle is lit today at Richard's head. We always light it to remember a day long, long ago, probably 90 years at least, a day long, long ago in Germany. It was the day of Richard's baptism. Just as an infant, Richard was brought to the waters of life. We are confident in God's call on his life begun that day so long ago. Richard rests in the arms of his good shepherd. Richard is embraced by his love until that final day when Easter will become, when we all, when, when Easter will come, when we all of us shall be raised with Christ. Until then, where do we turn? Family, as you must face this new unwanted chapter in your life, a chapter that is so hard to imagine without your beloved father and opa and grandpa alongside you, and brother, where do you turn? Where do we, all of us, find our confidence? Hear again the words of Psalm 91. 
Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. Family, you know that name. And the name is Jesus, Prince of Peace, Good Shepherd. He is risen and he is present with you now. In your weakness, receive his strength and light. In your days of confusion, anxiety, or fear about tomorrow, rest confidently in the shepherd who will not abandon or forsake you. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. And so, friends and family, in thanksgiving to God, we commend Richard Poubans into the hands of his Savior. He who loved him, he who died for him, God has showed us his salvation, for he has shown us Jesus. He who loves us, he who died for us, today we are thankful. Today we are satisfied, for God is good. Christ is risen. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join in, the, in your bulletin, please, as we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, and I invite you to stand as you are able. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus, fullness of compassion, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Richard and dry the tears of those who weep. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, man of sorrows, you wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, firstborn of the new creation, you raise the dead. Give to our brother life eternal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, friend of sinners, you promise paradise to the repentant thief. Bring Richard to the joys of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, wellspring of life, you washed our brother in baptism and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Give him communion with all your saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, bread of life, you nourished Richard at your table on earth. Welcome him at your table in the kingdom of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, bright and morning star, comfort us in our sorrows at the death of Richard. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death and by his resurrection opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come shall be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us commend Richard to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. And to your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Richard. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our final hymn is So nimm den meine Hände, Lord, take my hand and lead me. You may be seated for the final hymn. the table blessing and following the, the table blessing I invite our guests to come through here and greet the family on the way into the hall and the family has asked you please to begin eating as soon as you get into the hall let us pray we give thanks for all of your gifts this day O Lord particularly the gift of Richard and now as we gather before your gifts of food and community and fellowship may we know your peace and strength and light in our time together in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us go in peace. God's peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. God's peace. Peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace. You did great, Jackie. It wasn't easy, but you did a wonderful job. God's peace.
God's peace be with you.